is up gamers welcome back to this new episode of chainsaw man monday i am one of your hosts skeleton tom here we also got baby jim say hello hello <laughs> we also got your boy brian back again of course what's good and we got joey insert hello, space for the vine boom <laughs> we also have deja sometimes she's in the background say hi deja hello just like the first episode she's the watchful observer she's taking notes she's judging us so guys what do we think of episode 11 which just dropped today i liked it it was a lot of exposition a lot of talking which is usually not my mo but it makes sense obviously it's, you know motherfuckers need to talk sometimes he lets you know what's going on and, you know, the the build-up for Aki's fight at the end uh, that he's going to have next episode is pretty exciting. And meeting the new fiends was pretty exciting, too. Mm -hmm. I definitely love the expanding, adding more fiends. Like you said, that's going to be really cool as the show goes on more. And the build-up, man. I wanted to see the fight. The episode was too short. Eden, what did you think? Well, I really appreciated this episode because I know um, last podcast we talked about, um, I specifically talked about how I was disappointed that I wish we could see more of the ghost devil. And literally they just did that because I, mm -hmm. I was like, come on, like, bro, she literally just did one thing and then died. So it was nice to kind of see like more potential from the ghost devil because I literally just was like, what the, like, can I see more? Joe, what did you like? I would say overall, this episode was a lot slower, like Brian had said, but because of that, we got to like focus in on some of the character stuff, like especially with Aki and the future devil. Mm -hmm. That was honestly like my favorite scene in the whole episode. What is it? When the future devil was saying like, I'm going to stick around just because I think you have a really cool death. <laughs> that was like peak episode. Damn, bro. You just said the, the basically the episode went downhill for you. He <laughs> was like, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. favorite this part was lame in the, first 30 30 seconds. the first two minutes, and the rest of it kind of sucked. But no, I don't uh, think the rest of it sucked, but like that scene for me was like, that's what made the episode. That's fair. Yeah, I do think I agree with you guys. This one was kind of a more like front loaded episode. But to me, I think it was worth it for the, um, the conversation with uh, Makima and like the mafia guy. No, oh, yeah. I think as far as like if since this was like you said a more exposition heavy episode, that part of it to me was really interesting. Like that whole scene kind of stuck out to me because we were just talking about in the last episode how like mysterious Makima is, and here we get an element of her personality. Like one thing I noticed was how she goes to like this meeting, which is clearly she's like a government agent meeting with a criminal, right? And she just shows up by herself. And she's also surrounded by like 10 guys with guns and she just not even doesn't care at all because as you see in the episode, spoiler warning, she literally just looks at a guy and he dies. So I was just like, this is great. I'm, I'm glad we're getting more into like why everyone's so intimidated by her, you know? Yeah, she, the fight she, bro, she hands bro a fucking bag full of eyeballs. Yeah, what the <laughs> like, hell? Bro, I clock out. <laughs> and I love Yo, how she, I quit, bro. She was literally just like, uh, yeah, there's a guy who can put them back. If you do what I say, I'll introduce you to him. Like, she doesn't even guarantee he'll put the eyes back. <laughs> it's also funny, like, is that really her her goal to just protect humanity? Like, come on. I mean, literally, uh, uh -uh. I guess we're getting into more deta spoilery details here, but the, the part where she's at dinner or like a lunch meeting with um, Ishibe, I believe is his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was me and Deja. I'm going to put it in the episode here, but we, we thought of a meme of that part where he just points at the screen and says, you liar. We were dying <laughs> laughing at that, just imagining, like, I'll put it in the episode. You'll see it. What would you guys think about that scene? I, I really like that character because he's just such a, like, he's like, yeah, this fucking sucks. And he knows everything fucking sucks. And he just keeps dealing with it anyway. <laughs> I don't know, something about that, like, something about the way he kind of just responds to the world around him. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I really like it. His attitude was interesting. It's funny how he's like referring to Denji and Power as toys, but he's like, yeah, I'm starting to care about them. Yeah. Like, dang, you're getting like, soft. I want to care about them. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good yeah, part. It's wholesome to me. I mean, I, I mean, he's beating the fuck out of him, but it's, it's cute. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm a dad who kills my children for fun. Yeah, normal. Normal day in Ohio. Is that what the kids say these days? <laughs> Dude, that was fucking epic. <laughs> Very relevant joke. Joe, what do you think? You said you liked him, right? What do you think of that? Yeah. We got a little bit, see a little bit uh softer side of him. 
Yeah, I do like that they're kind of rounding out his personality and he's not like a one trick pony like the oh wow, this is the crazy teacher guy. Mm -hmm. Um and really just kind of stepping into a more like actual leader position with them or less leader, more like, you know, friend, mm -hmm. I guess. I think that's really interesting to see from that kind of character. Overall, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. I um what was the what was the part that came after that? So the whole thing, they're trying to, if I'm understanding this right, they're trying to get at the guys who attacked them in the last episode, right? They're all hiding out yeah. in this building. Yeah, the Katana guy and right. the snake girl. I find it funny how they just casually mentioned, like, a group of zombies. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. just a thing? Yeah. Like, did was there, I assume they're going to, like, I don't know, maybe they will go into detail on this, maybe they won't, but, like, I was picturing there was just one original, like, plague devil or, like, zombie devil, and then it just the, yeah, that's from the first from episode. Oh shit! You're yeah. right. It literally was the first. Wow. <laughs> wow. Come on, man. It's fucked up. Yeah, I need to rewatch all the episodes again. That that was interesting. Yeah. Because that's we... why I feel like because I was so confused when that one guy was like, "Oh, I fucking hate Denji." I'm like, bro, why do you hate Denji? His only goal is to touch boobs. Like, if you hate Denji, that's a you problem. Like, he is not doing anything to anybody. Then I was like. Yeah. Oh, he did fuck up the zombie devil in the first episode. So the whole uh, Yakuza thing. Oh, okay, the Yakuza guys. I wanted to go back on that. The mafia dude, as far as anime characters go, I think he has solidified that this show has a really good art style. Because he's like one of the coolest yeah. design like anime characters I've ever seen. What's just because you're a Sopranos fan? You're right, bro. He literally is like the, he's like the Japanese Tony Soprano. He's got a big fat cigar. <laughs> talking about necessary evil yeah that, that watching him like cut the cigar and slide it i was like damn i kind of kind of want a cigar now <laughs> like, right and you see to go get one. there's some filmmaking shit going on there they, they did schroding schrodinger cigar cutter that you see it on the table and then he picks it up and uses it yeah it's like that's beautiful this show honestly th this episode is just another like e example of how good this show looks like the facial expressions are so intense it makes me think of from we didn't i don't know if we talked about this but in the i think it was the second episode when denji kicks aki in the nuts and his facial expression <laughs> i feel like they're just carrying on to that especially with the ending of this episode yeah with them getting bro speaking about that can we please talk about aki bitch slapping that dude that came in with the gun <laughs> yeah. bro yeah, he laid him out. That was fucking awesome. Bro, I laughed so hard. He winded that up. Like, I was like, what is he about to do? Oh, yeah, man, I'm surprised because so you notice he's like mercilessly chopping away at devils, just killing them. But the people, he just kind of like slaps them. I don't know. It reminds me of Jujutsu Kaisen because they got like hands ready to eat for everybody in Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, they be beating <laughs> niggas up with just fists. Th that's Jujutsu funny Kaisen, i actually so. saw some comments on youtube of people saying that or it was on tiktok there was some like chainsaw man edit and a bunch of the comments were saying it was like this gives me jujitsu kaisen vibes yeah because like in shonen anime like it's i feel like that's why it was just becoming too much for me because everything was like some crazy power that people were fighting with so i think when jujitsu kaisen came out it was just kind of refreshing to like just see people literally just beating people up. Right. And like same thing with like Tokyo Revengers. They were just in a courtyard just fighting everybody. No powers, no nothing. It's like you don't really see that that much anymore in Shonen because you got Deku over here snapping his fingers and then everything is gone. It's just nice to see someone slap somebody. You know, like that's all I'm saying. It's nice. No, I agree. I think seeing realistic yeah. fighting animated really well is so satisfying. That Boondocks episode. <laughs> Y'all have to know what I'm talking about, bro. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Because it's like, it's, isn't it literally just a recreation of another anime scene? I can't remember which one it is. Yes, yes, it is. I can't remember which one it is either, but yes. Just seeing regular fighting getting animated, it, it's, it's refreshing. <laughs> we need, someone needs to put like a school fight recorded off of a phone in, a, in an anime. So about the new fiends and devils, I think the shark guy is just fucking funny. Yeah. yeah, honestly, he's one of my favorite characters. And you know what? Sw well, being cool. able to swim through any surface, that sounds kind of broken. Yeah, I was going to say, like, being a shark is one thing. Like, that's pretty scary. But also being able to, like, swim through walls, floors, ceilings, whatever, that's just terrifying. Right. Because <laughs> what is the limit of that? Every time they introduce these powers, I'm just like, what is the upper limit of this? Like, if he's on the bottom floor of a house, can he jump through the roof and swim through the floor of the second floor? Just, like, go through it like it's a portal? Yeah, I don't know. 
I guess I guess I never thought about it. Right. Or like if he's if he's like is it based on the depth of something as well? Like if he I don't know because it seemed like he was like hiding in the floor, like in the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah, he like, so, like came through the wall. If it's like a well, thin the zombies, surface, they're like in the basement, right? All the zombies are like in the basement. So uh-huh. he like, he like, damn, like <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Bro, you that... fight for your life. <laughs> he he said he could. Uh, he, uh... <laughs> no. I, I I can't explain it. He just was there. He's just in the wall. We'll have to leave that you one. Had to swim like from the outside in. And right, that would be yeah. so much material between like the outside and the basement of that building. So I assume he could just swim through the earth at a certain point. Yeah, yeah could he literally he swim wrong. through like one part of the earth all the way to the other side? Why is this guy not more of a problem, bro? That's what <laughs> he I'm just saying. Know how strong <laughs> They're he is. lucky he's on the. He's like naive because he could be the. Yeah. You're right. Oh, you guys want to fight me? Yeah, try fighting me in like 37 hours flying on the other side, <laughs> flying to the other side of the planet. What if you flew to the core? As, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like he's more powerful than a Lemillion from My Hero because he can pretty much do the same thing. But I mean, he's not practiced enough yet, but his name is Lemillion, right? Yeah, 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 right. What does yeah, he do? Yeah, so he like, he can like, I don't know, face through like walls and he, shit too, but he gets tired. Yeah, he basically dematerializes his body and mm-hmm. he goes through space and he can rematerialize his body and it like launches him back into where he's supposed to be. Right. But he ain't got no shark head though. Right. So that's the thing. He start. doesn't ha- he can't fucking bite people's <laughs> heads off. Also exactly. so the angel demon I how is that even a thing? Is there a demon angel? Well, I think so since fiends are still like they still follow the rules of devils, so like people just have a fear. I guess people have a fear of like biblically accurate angels, hmm. so they probably the angel devil just exists because of that. That's crazy. But that man was beautiful. What do you mean? Like, was it a man? Yeah, okay, wait. Accurate. Maybe I shouldn't ask that. Uh, the angel devil is yeah. very androgynous. I don't really think they have a gender. That's pretty cool. So is this show going to be like Monster of the Week style, where like every you know every couple episodes they introduce some crazy ass devil designs? Yeah. And it's like um, they have good guys and bad guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think the next one we meet is pretty probably my favorite arc. That's uh, I'm okay with that. I'm really anxious to see the gun devil. Yeah. That's probably a scary, wild, bro. Though. What's your guys' predictions? I personally really love that conversation in the car. He was like, honestly, I kind of hate you. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> you you look I look at you and I get pissed off. <laughs> and like, okay. <laughs> Is the guy saying that? Is he older than him? Like, he doesn't tell. look older than him. He looks younger. He looks like a teenager. That's what I'm saying. But also, Aki could literally be like 15 in anime <laughs> yeah. rules, you know? You just never know. I'm pretty sure Aki is an adult, though. Let's see. I'm just going to look it up. Joe, they what were you going like to say? You liked that conversation? Like oh, yeah. There's something just really satisfying about seeing characters just straight up tell their whole opinion about somebody <laughs> with no, like, no holds bar. Just like, I fucking hate you because you're doing this thing that I think is really stupid. And right. I'm just going to be real with you. <laughs> and then Aki's response is just so good. He's like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> if I lose, feel free to laugh. Yeah, I love that too. That was inspiring. I want to be like Aki. Keeping it real. Keeping it a buck. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep it a buck I, 50. With you know, you. I don't like you, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck, Chief. I don't think no one likes me. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. But, like, can we talk about how there's a violence fiend? Like, that made me laugh so hard. Like, I just know he wears black Air Forces. Yeah. <laughs> I guess people are afraid, afraid of, violence. of violence. That's a... Whoa, dude. That's a good point. The fear of violence. There's got to be... That, that's a fiend, right? Welcome violence. Oh, wait. What's, it, what's the fiend? What's the difference? Well, I think they follow the same rules as devils. So... But, like, power's a fiend, too. Yeah, but, people like, people just are, like, squeamish about blood. So she's, like, not all that powerful. Okay, so wait. Let's get this out of the way now. What is the difference between a full-blown demon, a fiend, and what's the other one? Wasn't there another one? Like having a devil contract? Or it's just having a devil contract. Okay, so obviously having a devil contract is just like you share something with a devil to use its powers. What is the devil? uh, The devils, devils are like, they are sentient, but they aren't like fully intelligent. So they kind of like exist to be whatever devil they exist to be. Mm Mm-hmm. So like if let's say um 
I'm trying to think of the ghost devil. Like the ghost devil probably can talk to you, just like the future devil could. Yeah. But they probably just aren't like they aren't living their daily lives like a fucking fiend is. Like a, the devils kind of have to like exist and eat humans and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. fiends, on the other hand, are fully intelligent and can live by themselves without having to eat humans and stuff like that. Though they probably still do if given the opportunity. So do we eventually learn the origins of devils, like where they come from? Yes. Okay, sweet. Because I'm sitting here thinking, like, bro, are they just from hell? Like, are they crawling out of hell? But don't don't answer that. I'm not going to go any further than just yes. I mean, you, they said themselves that the gun devil came from America because that's where the biggest fear was. So I'm pretty sure, like, you know, it comes from where the biggest fear is. It probably gets concentrated there and grows stronger. For example, like, we got into, uh, what is it, the spider fiend or is it the spider devil? It was a fiend. Okay, I'm pretty sure the spider devil had to come from Australia, bro, because ain't no bigger spiders than <laughs> there are in Australia. Same thing with the snake devil, like, they got those in Australia, so. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, you'll learn soon a definite difference between devils and fiends. Uh-huh. They do like, They do explain it. They will explain it later. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, they say, explained it a little bit with power, but just a little bit, but then in the future, though, like, yeah, you'll see. Cool. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Me and Brian know. <laughs> you freaking spoiler readers. I didn't read any spoilers, okay? I read, read and enjoyed the manga. All right. It's different than eating. I read and enjoyed the manga. Bro, I'm just impatient. Okay, so the ending. Let's talk the ending. All right, Let's gamers. Let's talk ending. What did you guys think of it? I personally was kind of like, bruh, come on. Yeah, I mean, that's just anime. Just the fucking cliffhangers. But I am excited to see Aki's fight, because... I thought it was really cool, and he definitely deserves the spotlight. Yeah, oh, I agree. Seeing him literally just, like, push his sword through all those fucking hands was so crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, like, me not reading the manga, but knowing what happens in the future, I don't really know what's going to happen. I just kind of know who dies and shit like that. So I'm like, you know how the episode ends with him and the ghost devil facing off, and they're, like, staring at each other? Mm-hmm. A big part of me is like, oh my god, is the ghost gonna like remember that Himeno told the ghost devil to protect Aki? And then is it gonna is she, the ghost devil gonna be like, oh, I can't hurt you? But like Maybe. my thing is like, I don't know what happens when the cut like when you know she's dead now. Like does that devil forget everything? Like I know it's controlled by the the snake girl now. Like, I don't know how that works. Like how does she how does she control that devil now? So, I don't know. I'm just really hoping that that is what happens. I think that could be really cool. I would love it if, like, because, well, see, clearly the devils have some sort of, like, they can make opinions on shit. Like, the future devil chose to live inside Aki's eyeball just because he wanted to see his death. But, yeah. so I I do think there's probably a chance. Because, well, I don't know. We we all picked up on the fact, like, man, I wish the ghost devil would have been in here more. That would have been way cooler. And then they bring it back. And then the first character they bring it back with is the only one who has a connection to it. So, I feel like there's got to be some sort of resolution coming there for him. And we're going to be sitting here next week like, man, they didn't <laughs> do shit about that. <laughs> what would you guys rate this episode overall? Give your like, give your review from top to bottom. All right, I'll go first. I, I like this episode, uh, like I said, but I do. I just get, you know, episodes that just have a lot of exposition. I just can't, I can't give super high scores for it just because it's kind of hard to watch sometimes for me. So I'd give it like a, I'd give it like a six out of ten. No, I'll rate it out of five. Uh, Man, that's a whole better. different... Three out of five. Skills <laughs> better, bro. Come on. No, it's Three not. Three out of five. Anyway. That'll be a whole... We, I can do a two-hour-long podcast on why rating things out of five is better than rating them out of ten. I'll save that for the uh, general podcast. It's <laughs> okay, a fucking three right. out of five. I didn't like the exposition, but I did like the the um, scenes that they, you know, obviously spend a lot of time on, like uh, Makima and the Mafia guys and... Uh, Aki and the and finding out about the new fiend, not finding out, but meeting the new fiends. Um, I enjoyed it overall. Good episode. Very good to watch right before uh, the podcast itself. Not gonna lie. Nice. We should honestly just start watching it together in Discord. Listen, I give the episode a four out of five, and here's why. I didn't give it a five out of five just because obviously it left on a cliffhanger. That's my own personal issue. Like. I was ready to watch the next episode right then and there. But I gave it a four out of five just because I thought the scene with Makima was really cool. Like 
it's a slow burn. Like she's a slow burn character. They're showing us a little bit of what she can do like every every other episode. So just the fact that she sat there so confidently in a room full of people who like would kill her and she walked out of there and they were all dead, like that's pretty cool. And you know, meeting all the new fiends and devils was also really cool. Uh the spider the spider fiend, scary as fuck. I also liked how they directly answered my question from last podcast. I was like, what about the ghost devil? Like, is she dead? Like, is she gone? What's like, what's happening? I want to see more of her. And they immediately the next episode, it's right there. So for that reason, I give it a four out of five. Nice. Joe, what'd you think? <laughs> I would say I probably would have to agree with the four out of five overall. Like I am generally fine with exposition heavy episodes. I really like seeing characters talk and how those interactions can like play out. So that doesn't really change my score that much. The action was just top notch at the end of the episode. So it's just overall, I would give it solid rating. Eight out of 10, four out of five. <laughs> okay, Deja. I would give it a 3 out of 5. Uh, it was a good episode, but I'm comparing it to the other episodes before that. And that one, for me, didn't excite me as much. But that could just be me, like Eden said, being impatient. I also don't watch anime that often, so I was kind of annoyed that I have to wait. It was only the episode 20 minutes long. So, like, having to wait another week just to see what happens next is kind of annoying. And for me, a lot of stuff didn't happen. To get me excited for the next episode, but that's that's just me. So basically, you're saying you hated it. <laughs> it sounds like that, but no, it was a good episode. But I hate it. To me, it seemed like filler. But that is just me, like I said. No, that's fair. After hearing all of your guys' ratings, I don't know. I'm mean, I'm kind of in between, but I think I'm gonna also give it a three out of five. It was really enjoyable. The show is beautiful as always. I love the artwork. I think specifically like the shading sticks out to me so much and like the lighting effects in the show are so good and they draw so much blood just splattering everywhere. And like when the guy, the mafia guy cut open his cigar, like the sound effect and all the, the pieces of tobacco flying everywhere. Like the, it was just episode was beautiful as always. And yeah, not much happened as far as progressing the plot. It's kind of just like the in-between of what's happening next, but I do still think it was enjoyable. I think, Part of me wanted to give it a four out of five because I just really liked the show. But yeah, three out of five because not too much happened. And the cliffhanger, I was like, bro, come on. Like it went, even when there was the cliffhanger when Denji jumped into the, the mouth of that demon in the hotel, I was like, eh, that's fine. But the cliffhanger for this episode, he it's like the fight's about to start. You're like, oh shit, here we go. And then it ends, which I mean, which is fair. You did get to see part of the fight with like him slicing up all the arms and stuff. But, you know, I want to see the 40-minute edit where it's the whole fight, front to back. But, yeah, three out of five, good episode overall. Very excited for the next one. Obviously. Look at that. No, actually, I'm not. I'm going to stop watching the show and the podcast is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you heard it here first, gamers, these are our thoughts, concerns, opinions about Chainsaw Man. Stay tuned for next week because finally we get to see Aki's fight. We get to see what happens and we're going to talk about it. And you can hear it here with us next Monday. Woo! Peace. Yeah. Woo! I fucking love anime. Woo!